Hey, and we're back, cpbgrowth.com. Another episode of Preventative Practice. I am Jared Cohen. Really happy to be here with you on week two, 2016, CrossFit Games Open. And uh, I got some really great feedback last week on the video that came out. And so I'm excited to build on that and um, just continue down this path of giving you more tools to think about prepping the system. I really want to emphasize the prep is the key here. There's a lot of other videos out there that are going to fixate more on the tips and tricks as it relates to the specific workout, strategizing it and whatnot. Um, and here I'm really staying within the prep realm, the actual usable mobility, how to get your neuromusculature working accordingly. Like, prepping that software and hardware together um, that really goes beyond some of the more nonchalant rolling and even band stretching that I think has gotten better but is still a little bit misinformed. So we want to give you a little better aim with how to attack that. And also know that the CrossFit Games right now, I'm just using this as a medium to bring out a lot of these great exercises and material and present the integration of my thinking to date but this stuff can be used way beyond uh, the emphasis that I'm relating them to as it relates to these CrossFit Games workouts. Uh, similarly, you could do this as prep. You could also pull pieces of this for the cool down. So think more outside the box um, than uh, just what I'm giving you as it pertains to uh, specifically this week, toes to bar, double unders, and cleans. All right, let's jump in. Upper body, lower body, cars, controlled articular rotations. In my opinion, this is how you should start your day. This should be a part of your morning routine. Um, this is what is recommended by Andrea Spina, functional range conditioning, and it is just a great way to make sure everything is moving the way it should, and if it's not, now you have a little bit more of an idea of, okay, what do I need to, uh, emphasize more accordingly based on those controlled articular rotation check-ins. Because I went more in more detail last week, I'm not going to go into uh, examples this week um, of the movement. You can check out my uh, channel. I actually have a whole playlist of cars from head to toe, uh, literally, and for this week, I'm gonna have you start with just full body cars. So for the upper body, cervical spine, uh, thoracic lumbar spine, the scapula, glenohumeral joint as it relates to the shoulder, your elbow, your wrists, lower body, hips, knees, and ankles. It's only two per side, assuming we're talking about you know uh, a, a joint that is left and right, um, and then each direction. So it's less reps than last week because we're hitting this as just sort of like the first thing we're checking off the box. I wanna make a quick point about the utilization of cars and one of the common mistakes I see as it relates to the shoulder. So when I start this control articular rotation, I'm coming into flexion and external rotation. I run out of room here, a little bit of upward rotation and reaching. And then as the shoulder goes into extension, I want to emphasize internal rotation. I see a lot of clients that just kind of stop here. The key here is use up all of that internal rotation. There's so much more to be had, and the concept is, as we know, if you don't use it, you lose it. And the same thing is as it relates to our movements. In CrossFit, we have a little bit of a misconception. I hate to break it to you guys that you know we're hitting all our bases, and we're really not. So again, this movement prep is an idea of giving you more of that multivitamin to fill in some of those gaps, especially when you go into something kind of uh, what really becomes more sports specific. Okay, so you got your cars. Look at the playlist to hit each of these two per side, each direction. And then we'll continue on here with the lower body and then we'll work back to the upper body. Rollout. Okay, I know a lot of coaches are uh, in more of the camp of, hey, we don't do soft tissue work or rolling before a workout. I think there's some truth to that as rolling out has more down-regulating qualities, but I think the mistake in ruling it out altogether is that the rolling out, if done correctly and with the right tools, 
helps prime that proprioception, that neuromuscular contraction, okay? Uh, and that's why the right tool is, is, is important, okay? I'm not referring to this as smashing here. Um, having a yoga tune-up therapy ball is really key as it relates to my thinking here of wanting to have something that's pliable and grippy and can actually meld and yield to the various uh, intersections and contiguous relationships of your hard and soft tissues. Okay, so feet roll out. Let's jump in. Let me show you four pieces of this. The first is just start moving in a vertical direction. Think about trying to spread the foot wide. Show the width of the foot. Okay, part number two. A little horizontal direction here, more of a smearing-like action to really emphasize giving some lift to that arch. Part number three, go more to the ball of the foot, pin and spin. And then part four, we have what I call the high heel maneuver. Lift your pants up. I'm gonna take the ball wherever it needs to go so that all my five toes are down, okay? And then very actively, keeping the toes down, I'm gonna try and reach my heel back as far as it can go. I'm gonna hang out here, contract into this position for about 10 seconds. I want you to light up all the stuff on the front of the foot, beneath the foot, and then reset. Get about four cycles of that to really get a full stretch and active contraction in this position of that elevated arch. Dr. Spina of uh, functional range uh, conditioning refers to cramping as neuromuscular confusion. So if you're cramping, it's indicative of how your body is not used to actually tapping into some of these more intrinsic foot musculature. Okay, moving on. up above the foot. We're going to address the shins here. And uh, this is a really cool setup that allows us to evoke more of the activation that I want to have taking place within a preparatory context. Um, this setup I got from Keith Wittenstein, Coach Panda, fellow yoga tune-up teacher with the band here, allowing me to not just merely address the sliding surfaces of my shin, but also start prepping this dynamic dorsi and plantar flexion, toes point away, toes point um, towards you, of the ankle. Okay, so let's think back to the content of this workout 50 double unders, triple extension for my cleans, I need to make sure that ankle is working as best as possible. And this kind of integrated soft tissue work with some um, active flexion of the ankle will help bring me to that place. All right, number three of the uh, lower body here is Spending some time in our 90-90 position. If the CrossFit's, CrossFit space adopts nothing else from functional range conditioning other than controlled articular rotations in 90-90, um, that, that'll be enough um, because these two pieces are just so uh, bang for your buck. 90 degrees, knee and ankle in front, trail leg, internally rotated, knee and ankle, okay? Spend a little bit of time just starting to get comfortable in this position, which may be very foreign to a lot of you, um, but then from there, I wanna make this much more dynamic, and that's why you see on the board I wrote switches, okay? About two minutes alternating back and forth. I'm gonna very actively contract 
this front leg down, think knee out position against the floor. And then I want to try and keep this down as much as I can. A little easier here, you can take the hands behind you and then try and externally rotate as much of that hip as you can. Once you've gotten that, uh, your kind of max range without this coming up, then let that come up and now you're switching. Control, 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 right? Prep the system to have control, okay? Be mindful, train with purpose and intention here, okay? And then again, drive that front leg down, switch. Let's spend about two minutes here, and then when I get to that new side, I can lean into that a little bit more. I can bias the front, or I can bias that internally rotated side. Okay? Last piece on the lower body. Banded hip extension in a split stance so that we're addressing the hip extension relative to double unders and then of course um, triple extension for those heavy cleans. Okay? So the band is on the back leg. The box here just allows me to get a little bit more of a lean in from that back side. So I'm squeezing the butt here, and then the internal activation that I want you to be cueing is internal and external rotation of that back hip, okay? This is a isometric pathway that I want to groom, meaning that your no muscular position is gonna change, right? So you're really just creating the contraction of trying to rotate that hip in, and then create the contraction of trying to rotate that hip out without anything changing, okay? And you'll feel that hip in that socket doing a little dance. And you'll spend a, literally about two minutes here, and then you can play around with some stuff on the front side, of course, a little multitask, but the emphasis is that back leg. Okay. Upper body. You've already done your cars. I know we uh, skipped this here. We'll come back to that at the end. Um, so we can just keep track here. Uh, stay on track, rather. T-spine rollout, okay? Box supported. This is a great way to roll out your T-spine. Uh, being unhindered, uh, unhindered uh, by the ground. Okay, so I have my yoga tune-up therapy balls. I'm gonna place my body over them so that they're in between the blades. Wait, do that, lay down one more time. Okay, now lay down. Okay, and what's key here is that now you can really informed freestyle this. Okay, I can start actually even thinking about some of those controlled articular rotations. Think about the front rack position, primarily, right? Because you don't have a lot of overhead work, but when those cleans get heavy, as we saw with Dan Bailey, he did a great job standing up with that, but that upper back was looking rounded, right? And we want to buffer that. For some of us that you know, don't have as much brute strength to just get the job done, we're going to need all the room we can get so being able to actually take your hands on the side here, pull those elbows up, and then spend some time greasing that groove will be very beneficial for you. All right, banded front rack with some pails and rails emphasis. So I have my band here. I'm gonna take the arm inside, and that band is gonna sit just beneath the elbow. The hand is gonna go on the outside of that band, okay? So this is, should be very familiar with those, uh, familiar to those that are familiar with Kelly Starrett's work in Mobility Wad, but just to specify the intent here a little bit more, what do we mean by contract and relax? So Andrea Espina has this concept of pales, your progressive angular stretch, and rails, the regressive angular. So in simple terms, you got two directions you wanna apply the contraction. Okay, the first is against some uh, external force, which is going to be my hand in this case. Okay, so I squeeze the butt belly tight, the hand is pushing the elbow in, and you resist. 10 seconds, drive that elbow out into the hand. 
Drive, drive, drive. Sustain the contraction. Okay, keep everything locked and loaded. Make sure the ribs aren't flaring up. Okay, and then I get the other contraction, which is this shortened position of trying to draw the elbow closer to my face without actually doing so. So I'm just trying to turn on these smaller muscles on the inside here. Get that working, get that working, get that working about 10 seconds. And then I'll just take up a little more of the slack and I'll go again. I'm pushing out, contracting out, and contracting in. Lastly, of um, this mobilization piece before we get up on the pull-up bar, is looking at the sleeper stretch, also with these pails and rails concepts. I really like this variation that Kelly brought to uh, the fitness world with the bar um, on top of the face of the shoulder to just ensure that we're keeping that uh, glenohumeral joint more centrated in the socket. Have your elbow either just in line with the shoulder or a little bit below, okay? And let's, let's be point specific here. So we know we're not snatching, so my elbow bend is gonna be um, a little bit more closer to 90, right? Because that hand's in closer for my clean grip. And then what we're gonna have going on here is the same concept of two specific contractions. So the first, right, is against that external force, my hand, I'm going to drive my forearm back into that hand, okay? So we're stretching internal rotation and I'm gonna try and bring this shoulder into external rotation against my hand. I'm gonna hold that contraction for about 10 seconds, tight, 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 and then I'm gonna go the opposite direction without actually moving thinking about turning on the musculature on this inside that would then draw that hand to the floor. Okay, 10 seconds there. I take up some of that slack, and then again, I hit both directions. About two minutes total. Lastly, we come up on the pull-up bar, okay? And I have, I've given you three components here. Bar hangs, elevate, depress, and some pullbacks. Bar hangs. Enough people don't spend enough time just hanging in good position from the bar. So again, we're prepping the system. We're trying to get the stakes and the environment that are gonna be more optimal so that when we get into the fiery zone, we are more conditioned to, to pull that in our favor. So I'm going to show you first, supinated, right? I have my hollow body position, and you're going to hold this for 15 seconds, okay? Shoulders are away from the ears, toes are pointed, squeeze the butt, belly tight. Just get comfortable here, okay? And then I've written, you're going to do mixed grip, you'll do both variations, okay? And then you'll finish up with your supinated grip. Notice, thumb underneath the bar, no exceptions here. Okay, that's how we put that shoulder into better external rotation torque. Next, elevate depress. You're gonna hit all four, supinated, mixed, mixed, pronated. Okay, I'm just gonna show you supinated here. Actively allowing the shoulders to shrug and then actively depressing as much as you can here. Keep the belly tight. Pull those shoulders away from your ears. You'll do five of those for each of the position that the wrist is in, okay? And then lastly is your pullback. You're prepping that huge mover of the lat to imagine as though this is a lat pull-down machine and you can pull that bar down to your hips, okay? I'll show you here, pronated, working on that lat pull-down in and of itself, don't turn this into a kip. Just prep what is essentially almost me trying to put myself into that front lever. Okay, let's come back for more to wrap this up. Notice I didn't even specifically touch toes to bar, right? We, we got close. Didn't touch double unders, didn't touch cleans. That doesn't mean that's not a part of your warm-up and appropriate skill work as needed, but 
where I wanted to spend the time is getting you to think about what are all those layers that I want to make sure are in check before I even start like turning this switch on. Because especially within the CrossFit community, if I'm using this for the sake of this workout, these movements should be somewhat second nature. But where we end up kind of hitting a wall sometimes is where the many moving parts don't dial in as well as they should. And that's what I want to help you with before you start hitting these switches. Okay? The last thing I did miss here, right after cars, I would do this little warm-up piece, just one minute. It uh, is amazing how effective this is. This is what I'm calling in and outs. You got either your mini band or um, some type of hip circle. You can go just above the ankles or um, just above the knees. And skill transfer, as well as get the heart rate up, jump and land, okay? Pulling position, squatting position. Also, this is my jump rope position. So what is an in and out? I'm starting in my jump stance, my feet are straight, I'm squeezing my butt. The feet are going from this jump stance to the land stance, back to the jump stance. Common mistake is for you to let the feet come in too close, where you then override the resistance of the band. The other thing you wanna add here is the shoulder movement, okay? So I'm gonna to touch in front and touch behind. Good way to get the flexion and extension of the shoulder primed and ready to go. And work this skill work here of really trying to stay in this same plane the whole time. I'm not jumping forward, I'm not jumping back. I'm in the same spot. And you're gonna get this for a minute. I promise you at the 30 second mark, you're gonna be like, how have I never done this before? Why do I feel like my conditioning is not so good right now? Um, and it's not that your conditioning's not good, it's just that this is so effective, okay? So you should be a lot more hot and sweaty there, and then you can embrace the other stuff that I just showed you a little bit more productively. With that being said, two weeks in here, CrossFit Games open, I wish you guys the best. Leave any questions in the comments, thoughts, concerns, ideas for future week, um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm Jared Cohen. You can find me at cpbgrowth.com. This is my YouTube channel, Preventative Practice, and I uh, wish you the best on this second week of the workout. Remember to train with purpose. I'll see you next week.